I used to really wonder if God's will for me would mean an ugly man. You know, when every, when it always felt like the cute guys, God was saying no, no, no. I'm like, okay, so who is not the real one? Is he not the one that is ugly that you will not say yes to? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If today is your first time here, hey, hi. My name is Tolu Wanimi, but you can just call me Tolu. I'm a Nigerian Christian YouTuber and also a doctor in training. On this channel, I create content around Christian lifestyle, girl talk, and medical school life, okay? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about praying for your future. So I've divided today's video into two parts. Why you should actually pray for your future, husband, wife, kids, your future generally, and how you can actually go about praying, you know, for these things or about these things. First of all, by praying, you're making it God's business. Like you're literally telling God that, you know what, this is not my business anymore. I'm giving this to you. You're literally giving your worries. You are, you are having an exchange. So you're giving away your worries for his peace. So you take, he takes your worries. You give, he gives you his peace. Okay. So there's that exchange that is going on. You're, you're telling God, you know what, this is your business now. This is not my business. It's now on you to ensure that things go well. It's now on you to ensure that my future is, you know, settled and sorted out. I'm no longer holding on to my own abilities. I'm no longer trying to figure it out. I'm no longer holding on to my to my head knowledge i'm giving it all to you at this point so by praying about your future you are making it god's business because the truth is that you are not in control you are never in control and then you cannot react the same way the world reacts so people in the world worry about their future it doesn't make sense that you that is in christ will worry about your future as well the holy spirit is your advantage you have an advantage as a person in christ as a person who has accepted jesus into their lives okay so you can't worry like the world worries the things the, wor the world worries about should not be your worry. Your worry should be something else. Your worry should not be what the world is worrying about. It's a misnomer. It's an error. Now, am I in any way saying that if you don't pray about your future, or if you don't pray for your spouse, then you're going to marry a bad man, or you're going to marry a bad woman, or your future will not be good? No, I'm not saying that, but come on, guys. Let's face it. We worry. We are worrying about these things. And I'm saying that instead of worrying, there's a remedy. Why don't you take the solution? Why don't you take the other way? Why don't you take the other alternative? Why don't you take... Paul's suggestion, okay, instead of worrying, why don't you pray about it? Praying about it gives you rest. It gives you, you receive grace and rest for the now. So when you pray about your future, you are receiving rest for the now. It allows you not to miss out on what is happening right now. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow comes with its own problems, with its own stress and all of that. So if you spend every day of your life worrying about every other day, then you're never going to live that very day of your life, okay? So you don't want to be that person who spends life chasing another that day like you, you seem to just be chasing something you seem to be running after something you're never settled you're never at peace things are never just okay with you you don't want to be that christian so instead of worrying so much about all of this stuff why don't you just pray about it why don't you release it why don't you give it to god why don't you tell god you know what it's god's problem now it's not my problem anymore it's not my own anymore my own is to do what god has called me to do i'm not going to worry about what happens next or what happens tomorrow or what happens the day after tomorrow okay so now that we know why we should pray about our future a future spouse, a future kids, a future life, a future homes, and all of that. How do we actually go about praying about our future? The first thing I'm going to say, guys, is that you should never pray from a place of fear. Pray from a place of faith. Now, God doesn't work with fear. Fear limits God. Fear, fear makes God small. Fear paralyzes God, so to say. Paralyzes in quote, okay? Because God doesn't work from fear. God works from faith. The Bible says in Mark 11 verse 24 that whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. So it, it comes by believing. It comes by faith. You receive your salvation by faith. How is it that you think that you want to go, go, go on with life without that same faith that gave you your salvation? How do you actually eliminate fear? You eliminate fear by reminding yourself of God's promises. What has God said about your future? What is written in the scripture? Because many times when we talk about God's promises, you know, when people are like, God will fulfill his promise, I used to wonder what exactly is God's promise to me? Like I've never heard God tell me, my child, my child, I promise you that. But then I got to understand that his promises are written in his word. So what does the scripture say about your future? Of course, the popular scripture, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and, and added no sorrow. So if it is God that is giving you your future, it will not come with sorrow. It will not come with problem. It will not come, it make it rich. It will, it will, you will be prosperous. 
prosperous. You will be fulfilled because it is God that is giving you that future. That's what scripture says, that give to give you a future and a hope and to give you an experience expected end. That's the part I love most. I used to really wonder if God's will for me would mean an ugly man. You know, when every, when it always felt like the cute guys, God was saying no, no, no. I'm like, okay, so who is not the real one? Is he not the one that is ugly that you will not say yes to? Because it always felt like God's will will be ugly. God's will will be a poor man. God's will will be something bad. God's will shall... It, the idea of God's will is that it's something bad. It's something ugly. It's something I'm not going to like. It's something I'm not going to enjoy. It's something that's going to make me sad. Then maybe initially to make me sad. Then later I'll not say, well, it's God's will. Let me accept. So there's just that mindset. There's just that, there's just that thinking. There's just that mentality. However, I've come to understand that the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. You know what? God did not come, but God does not intend to cut your expectations short. He intends to surpass them. So sometimes the things you think you know, you don't. God's plan is to give you an expected end and even to surpass it. So let's throw out that mentality where we feel like if it's God that is giving it to us, then it has to be something bad. You know, I would think that it has to be an ugly man or it has to be this or that. No, his expectation, your expectations rather, will not be cut short. So remind yourself renew your mind daily with the word of god what is god saying about your future husband what is god saying about your future spouse your future kids your future home what is god saying about these things okay what is in the bible what is written about this is renew your mind daily with this things. and as you renew your mind you eliminate fear and you embrace the faith that is rightly yours so how do you go about praying for your spouse like more practically now okay first learn to thank God for them. Like, learn to by faith just thank God. Lord, I thank you for my future husband because you know you're going to get married or at least you believe you would marry if Jesus tarries, okay? So, God has not told you that you're not going to get married. So, if he hasn't told you that then you're not, you believe you're going to get married, right? So, you thank God for your future spouse. You thank God for your future kids. Just learn to thank God. Like, as if, as if they were there already. So, I like to just thank God for them. You know what, God? I thank you for my my future husband. I thank you because he's blessed. I thank you for, I thank you for his job. I thank you for everything. I thank you for this i thank you for that so learn to take your time and thank god for your future why because you trust him you already know that he's coming to give you an expected end so you don't ever have to pray from that place of fear you pray from that place of a knowing like pray from a place of knowing so thank god because you know already you are praying from a place of victory so starting with thanksgiving is putting you in that stance of victory that okay i'm not praying because i'm defeated and i'm afraid no i'm praying from a place of victory i know that god has already overcome the world and that's where i'm praying from that is my mindset as i stand or i sit or anything to pray about this to pray about my future so learn to thank god first learn to just put god into i'm not saying you must thank god first I'm, okay i'm not saying that has to be a routine i'm just saying it's something you should include in your prayer another thing i like to do is to pray about present challenges like i just assume that maybe my future spouse or my future husband is going through something like maybe he is so when i'm praying I'm, I'm just i'm going to be like you know what god i pray for my future husband right now whatever challenge he's going through right now i ask that you come through for him and sometimes when you yield so much to god you begin to get sensitive sometimes you just get that urge to just pray about your spouse like you're praying about something else and the holy spirit interrupts your thoughts with that thought pattern that why don't you pray for your spouse that's him that's the holy spirit it doesn't have to be some huge dramatic stuff okay you could just be praying about your normal you're going about your normal daily activities or anything and suddenly a thought just interrupts your normal thought pattern and it's like why don't you just pray for your future husband right now that may be the holy spirit prompting you to pray because something may be going on in his life or her life for those for the guys your future wife's life know that he wants you to pray about okay so you can pray about these things you can actually it's not conventional it's not popular but i think it actually works okay prayer is like an investment okay you're, you're, you're investing into your future by praying it's one way to actually invest into your future okay so you can learn to just pray about present challenges especially if you have a leading to do so now create a picture it's okay to visualize what that future is going to look like create a picture with the mind of god interact with god's mind take a peep into god's mind and see what god sees concerning your future and the only way you can do that is to have a good relationship with God, is to, is to have that secret place with God, okay? So I have tons of videos, I have videos on building your relationship with God and all of that, so you can check that out after this video or up there in the cards or, you know, the end screen or anywhere. I have videos on that, I'm not going to go into that now. So you can build your relationship with God. If you build, if you have a solid relationship with God, He won't hide anything. God, God's intention is not to hide anything from you. God actually wants you to know things, okay, as much as you can handle. 
at every point in time. God wants you to know things. God doesn't want to keep you in the dark. God is light. He wants you to come into the light. He wants you to have understanding. He wants you to have clarity. He wants you to have knowledge, okay? So having a relationship with God and having an intimate secret place, you know, is a working functional secret place, not a secret place that is cold, not an epileptic secret place once in a blue moon kind of a thing. A secret place that is working, that is functioning. You get to interact with God's mind. You get to see what God sees about your future. Now, I'm not saying that you get to figure it out. I'm just saying you get to see, you get to have a vision that you can run with, that you can work with. And it's important to visualize. There's power in your imagination. When God wanted to bless Abraham, he told him to go out there and look at the stars. God had to give Abraham a picture. He said, look at the stars. As many as these stars, like if you, as many as these stars are, that's how many kids I'm going to give you. That's how many generations, children I'm going to give you. So God had to give him a picture. God could have just told him, I'm going to give you so many kids, but God showed him something and God is willing to show you something. If only you will stay in that secret place and listen to him. So it's okay to visualize, okay? But don't visualize from flesh. Don't do it from your mind. Don't do it from head knowledge. Do it in the, in your secret place. Let it be the Holy Spirit. Let it be you and the mind of the Holy Spirit, like your mind and the mind of God interacting with each other and coming up with that. And this is one of my favorite tips, guys. Speak it. Declare it. The Bible says that God calls things that are not as though they were. Now you are like God. You carry his seed in you. You carry his nature. You have the right to call things that are not as though they were. So you can begin to prophesy. Prophesy. Speak into your future. So instead of being afraid that, oh my God, I may be so poor. Everybody in my family is poor. It's possible that I miss several people. Why don't you proclaim that I am rich? I am rich. I carry the DNA of God. Therefore, I cannot fail. Therefore, I cannot I cannot lose it in life. Therefore, I'm going to make it. Therefore, I'm going to marry a good man. I'm going to marry a good man. I'm going to marry a Exactly who God has in mind for me to marry. I'm not. I'm not going to miss it in marriage. I'm not going to miss it here. I'm not going to. Why don't you open your mouth and make those declarations instead of carrying in fear and being all sad and all depressed? Oh, you th those thoughts come into your head that oh, you've committed an abortion. Are you sure you're, you're ever going to be able to give birth to a child? Why don't you counter it and begin to speak and say, no, you know what? I'm fruitful. You know what? I'm fruitful. Just begin to speak. Speak into your future. Declare. My husband. How do you want it to be? My husband is going to be handsome. My husband is going to be rich. My husband is going to be on fire for the Lord. I proclaim it that my home will be on fire for Jesus. I'm not going to have a stay home. You know what? Forget, throw away what the world shows you. Throw away the bad things you see on Facebook. Throw away all of those ideologies. That's not your reality. And we're coming to that, okay? That's not your reality. You operate from the reality of Christ. So have that mentality and speak it. It is okay to speak. You are not lying. You are just prophesying. Now choose the reality of Christ. Choose God's reality. The truth is that there are many facts. My friend said this once, that there are many facts, but there's only one truth, and the truth is Christ. So when the Bible says, whatsoever things are true, think on these things. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, think of these things. The truth is Christ. So it's literally telling you, think about Christ. Let your thoughts point to Christ. So if your thoughts does not look like Christ, it's not true. So you're having those thoughts. Yeah, and the thing is that these other thoughts that you may be having, they may be facts, they are realities. They are realities, okay? When people say, let's be realistic, they're not lying, okay? These are realities, but there's a greater reality, and that reality, that greater reality is Christ. So, yes, it may be true that nobody in this family used to marry early. In this family, they don't used to marry early. That's actually a fact, okay? That's the fact, but what is the truth? What does Christ have to say? What, the, what, what does it look like from Christ's standpoint, okay? So, you have to make a decision. Which reality are you going to believe? It is true that people who read this course, they don't used to succeed. Like you, you the people who used to read to graduate from this department, they don't succeed. That may be a fact. It may be a fact that yes, the economy of Nigeria is not good. The economy of this is that. Okay, but what is the truth? Yes, people who read this course, they don't succeed. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's another reality. Yes, the economy of Nigeria is bad, but He gave it the power to make wealth. That's another reality. So which reality are you going to are you going to choose, believers? Which reality are you going to pick? Are you going to pick the reality of the world, or are you? to pick the reality of Christ. These things are realities. They are facts. And then there's the truth. Choose which one you're going to pick. Are you going to pick the facts or are you going to pick the truth? So operate on the reality you choose. If you choose the reality of this world that you don't belong to, that's on you. Fine. You will operate from that reality and you will see, you know, realities come out from that reality. 
But if you choose the reality of Christ, you choose the reality above. Paul said in the book of Colossians, operate from the reality of heaven because you don't belong here. So if you operate from the reality of heaven or you operate from the reality of Christ, then you would see those realities play out for you. So I'm asking you today, which reality do you choose? And whenever a thought comes into your head, whenever a, a, a mentality or a, anything comes into your head, ask yourself, does this thought point to Christ? Does this thought look like Jesus? If it doesn't point to Christ, if it doesn't look like Christ, it's not Christ. And that means that it's not true. And that means that it's not from God. And that means that it's from the devil. And the devil never tells the truth. So never forget that. If it's not from Christ, it's from the devil. And the devil never tells the truth. And Christ's reality is true. So ask yourself, so every time a thought comes in that you know I don't think I'm going to blow I don't think I'm ever going to hammer nobody in my family ever this nobody in my family in the history of my family in the kiniko 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 ask yourself does this thing that I'm entertaining these thoughts that I'm entertaining does it look like Jesus because if it doesn't look like Jesus it's not true thrash it out so operate from the reality of Christ ask yourself today which reality do you Choose. Okay guys, I hope that this video has been really helpful to you. If it's been helpful, remember to hit that like button and let, let me know in the comment section what you think and let me know what has really blessed you from today's video in the comment section. And of course, if you're interested in more content like this on Christian lifestyle, girl talk, you know, medical school life and just helping you live your life as a Christian, then hit on that subscribe button and be a part of the family. I really, really, really hope that you've been blessed by watching today's video. I love you guys. I pray for you guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.